I Am Not Okay With This resembles so many classic 80s movies viewers have come to love over the years. There's a little bit of Breakfast Club here, a little bit of Carrie there. Obviously, there's allusions to Scanners when Sydney totally loses it and ends up... Uh, wait, hold on. Have you all watched the first season? Seriously, there are some major spoilers ahead. Come back once you finish the first season. We promise it'll blow your mind. For those who did finish season one, prepare yourself for all the theories surrounding Sydney's powers in season two. Okay, what happened? See, we're jumping right into spoiler territory. To get to the big theories and breakdowns for season two, we first need to go back over season one. Even if you literally just finished watching it and clicked on this video while the credits roll, you still need the refresher. You never know if you missed some of these important details. Season one is all about Sydney Novak trying to adjust to life without her dad. He passed last spring, and according to Sydney's counselor, she's not handling it well. The only people who seem to understand Sydney are her two friends, Stanley and Dina. There's one big issue. Dina's dating a rude jock named Brad and it's hurting her friendship with Sydney. Okay, obviously that's not the central conflict. The event does spark something in Sydney though. She gives Brad a nosebleed with her mind. It's when our protagonist begins to discover her telekinetic powers. This instigates a search for the truth about her father's passing and the origin of Sydney's powers. These three characters learn more about themselves along the way, but it's Sydney who delivers the big shock in the end. Sydney, is she okay? Viewers literally first see Sydney covered in blood. Seriously, she looks like Kevin Malone when he spills the chili, only this time it's much gorier. That's our first impression. No wonder the show's titled, I am not okay with this. We're not okay with this either, Netflix. Most of our understanding of Sydney comes from her diary entries. Her counselor gives her the journal in the first episode, and the readings only continue from there. However, more often, the protagonist's true inner dialogue is expressed through her friendships. Stanley Barber is her neighbor turned ally when he discovers her secret powers. He's the catalyst to show Sydney understanding those abilities. Meanwhile, Dina instigates the growth of Sydney emotionally. Dina helps Sydney come to terms with her true self and accept who she is. I finally figured it out. The reason I don't like Stan. Of course, this creates conflict. Stanley likes Sydney, but Sydney likes Dina. However, Sydney's hiding her powers from Dina. By the end, Sydney believes she's ready to be okay. The problem is her true feelings are still being kept from her real friends. Season 1 Ending Look, we can't pretend that all that drama we laid on your lap just goes away. Things start turning when she investigates her dad's secret chest in the basement. Sydney discovers her dad might have had the same powers as her when she finds out about his life as a soldier right before homecoming. To Sydney, this proves her dad struggled with the same thing she's going through now. No one could possibly know what he was dealing with. It makes her feel less isolated. She dons his dog tags and finally feels ready to control her emotions. Heck, she even asks Dina to homecoming. The trouble is a belligerent Brad is at the dance waiting for her. Remember Brad? Yeah, it turns out he's angry about Sydney breaking up him and Dina when she catches Brad cheating. To enact his revenge, he steals her diary. Dear Missing Diary. He begins to expose both her closeted sexuality and the powers to the whole school. Of course, you all know what happens next. The audience is left with Sydney alone on a fire tower. A man steps out of the shadows. He reveals that it's time to begin. Show versus graphic novel. It took us a while to finally get to the smoke man, but there's a reason. After all, the whole show is based on a graphic novel by Charles Foreman. Many things stay the same, like Sydney's inner monologue and the 80s theme. However, there are some differences. The most glaring is the spot with Brad at the end. Brad ends up going out in a similar fashion, but Sydney is more in control of her powers at this point. Granted, not by much, but we don't get the shower of gore the show provides. Instead, Brad collapses on the ground from a brain aneurysm. It's still dark, but far more subtle. The show further contrasts the novel by dismissing Sydney's father off screen. In the book, her father is in pain in the basement, and it's up to Sydney to help him by using her powers. Sydney basically assists him with the manner at hand, which doesn't happen in the show. She was with me when I found out about my dad. Then at the fire tower, Sydney does the same thing to herself. No shadow figure reveals itself in the story. The smoke monster cometh. We're finally ready to talk about the shadowy figure that appears to haunt Sydney throughout the first season. So many fans want to know what this guy's deal is, and to be honest, we're not totally sure either. So let's talk about the known variables. That way, the theories will make more sense. Maybe 
could hear some of those dumb theories of yours. One thing is clear, this person can fade into a cloud of smoky dust. It looks like he's voluntarily getting snapped by Thanos every time the dude disappears. Also, it appears the smoke man is, well, a man. It certainly sounded like it was in the final scene, so that's why we keep saying he. They should be afraid. Anyways, that and his line, let's begin, implies he knows more about Sydney's powers. It's evident to anyone watching that this guy is the same kind of superpowered person that Sydney is. He followed her with that knowledge, but he's not necessarily a good guy. The biggest mystery is his identity. Many viewers believe that the Smoke Man is the father. Also, that's what he's called, the Smoke Man, so obviously he's a big deal. We just can't figure out his intentions. Wise Sage Motif don't worry, we're gonna start referring to the character as Smoke Man. We're sure it was driving some of you guys wild. This character seems key to season two, so we're fixing that. We believe the Smoke Man is going to give us that master and apprentice dynamic Stanley mentioned. Mentor figure, you know, who visits the hero. There's just one issue. We don't know how it'll fall out. How they can harness those powers for good. There are the excellent relationships we see, like Harry and Eggsy, or Tony Stark and Peter Parker. These mentorships end up butting the main character into a real star, taking on real conflicts. Maybe this is Sydney's destiny. Perhaps this smoke man is going to build out the world outside Sydney's small Pennsylvania suburb and give her new purpose. This scenario is the best case. Okay, that's the bright side. Then there's the Obi-Wan and Anakin's or Ra's al Ghul and Batman type scenarios. Perhaps Sydney is going to take her training down a darker path that the smoke man warns about. Or maybe he's the villain and Sydney will have to defeat him somehow. Sadly, this feels very likely. Trailblazing or copycats? We are in the thick of it. By now, you realize that season two is going to be the penultimate. Here's where the showmakers go off script and make this story their own. Sydney's life is anything but ordinary now. The story needs to reflect that, but everyone's worried about how they'll do it. Let's get real. I am not okay with this isn't reinventing the wheel here. A teenager coming of age while also developing powers is nothing new. The question is, are they going to stand out in this niche genre? Well, we're waiting. Everything centers on Sydney and how much her powers grow. They can embrace the realism of a small town turned into a significant conflict like in Raising Dion, or go light-hearted with the drama like in The Boys. Of course, they could always get even darker and moody like Brightburn. Then again, they could choose to stand out and become something new. Just keep your fingers crossed, it's more like the Unbreakable trilogy and less like Chronicle. At least that would make the show successful enough. Sydney is basically 11. For our money, the show is going to turn out a lot like another successful Netflix show, Stranger Things. Yeah, 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 we hear your groans from the other side of the screen, but hear us out. Sydney is not 11. She's not isolated or hiding from scientists. Sydney's understanding of teen culture is light years ahead of Eleven's, but there is one track that will align. Eleven's powers progress each season. The monsters the characters face escalate in threat, and Eleven does too. Expect the same from Sydney and this show. The conflicts are going to get bigger in scale, and the smoke man is proof. We just wonder how close the two Netflix rising stars will be by the end. Eleven even leaves the confines of Hawkins to explore her powers, and we have to wonder if it'll be the same for Sydney. She's at a crossroads here at the end of season one, just like Elle was. There are truths to discover and skills to develop. We even believe it'll be faster than Eleven's growth, and hopefully a little different. Season two plot. Time to stop comparing and start theorizing. Things can't stay stagnant. Dear diary, I murdered a hedgehog. A hedgehog and Brad were the two tally marks from season one, and we're betting those numbers aren't gonna stop climbing. The smoke man will help Sydney control her powers, but how much and at what cost? Not to mention the fallout of homecoming has yet to be seen. Sydney might be in trouble with the law. She'll likely have to hide away from the world while she learns how to grow her powers. Expect this mysterious figure to become quite close to her by the end of the season. Heck, as we said earlier, odds are he ends up being the villain of the series. But it's not just that relationship that will develop. Stanley protected Sydney in those final moments and knows where the diary is. He's going to find out the secret she's kept from him. We just wonder how fracturing that'll be to their partnership. Moreover, Dina is still in the dark. Expect her character to push into the foreground with Sydney as the plot drives forward this next season. Sydney in Season 2 Sydney was a novice in Season 1. She's in the dark for most of the story and can't come to terms with reality until later on. Her powers are just starting to develop, and we have an inkling of where they'll end up by the conclusion of Season 2. Remember, it's all about escalation. The Smoke Man either has the same gifts or knowledge of their source. 
We're calling it now, Sydney is going to be able to fade just like him by the end. Getting to that point is a bit of a mystery. We know that Sydney starts at point A, but getting to point B is bound to be filled with turmoil. She hasn't even stretched her power yet. By now, it's clear her emotions are going to drive her ability forward. Dina and Stanley are both going to push the boundaries of Sydney's emotional stability. Odds are, Dina is going to do something drastic that sets off a whole new power in Sydney. Now, we're just waiting to see what power that's going to be. Season 2 needs to hurry up and get here. We can't wait to see how this plays out. What do you think Sydney's powers are going to look like? Let us know in the comments. Plus, like and subscribe to support The Binger and keep up to date with our daily release schedule. As always, thanks a lot for watching.